Hello, welcome to Data for Justice. My name is Dee Lung. I am passionate about data and research because I always want to learn more about people's lives, listen to their stories, especially when their lives are different than my own. I decided to become a researcher to help collect these stories. I never wanted to write reports just to have them sit on a shelf to collect dust. I believe that research can bring together many different perspectives and help us understand each other better. The goal of this presentation is to help you collect and gather information to tell your own stories. Recently, I led a national study on mathematical formulas used in courts around the United States. These mathematical formulas are sometimes called algorithms or machine learning tools used to assess a person's risk level. These formulas commonly use personal information like education, housing situation, income and employment to calculate a score. Someone's personal background information is put into this formula and then it spits out a number. A judge uses this number or score to decide the amount of bail a person should pay or whether they should stay in jail. We designed a questionnaire and then we co-called government administrators around the country and conducted one-to-one -one interviews to learn more about whether or not they have a tool in their community, how they're using it, and what data they are they using. We also look at government websites and use the Freedom of Information Act or FOIA to obtain records that were not always readily available to the public. Here are our results. We found that these scores take into social and economic factors like a lower level of education or a lack of home ownership and employment are seen as negative and impact negatively on a person's score. We revealed, we, our research revealed this, that youth are inherently receiving worse, worse scores because they have lower levels of education, lack home ownership and stable employment. Our research shows that these formulas have built in biases toward youth. The result was an interactive platform for activists and community members interested in learning more how these technologies are used in their communities. They can also uh, compare with what's going on with their neighboring town. My um, goal was to demystify opaque mathematical formulas and wanted to raise awareness so community members will ask questions and get the answers they need. This research took two years to closely examine every state. Now I want to show you an example that took only one day and included another form of community engagement. During a Maker's Fair, I um, asked random strangers. I just set up my personal laptop and asked anyone walking by to drop a pin on an electronic map. I asked individuals to share memories and experiences they have associated with literature by placing a pin on the map to represent their favorite reading spot or where they received their first library card or might have read a, a new poem. This experience showed me that research can be participatory and interactive. It could also be quick and easy. I presented a few examples. Now it's time to talk about how you can collect your own data. Research is a form of crowdsourcing. Collect data from sources and tools that you already have and use every day. Uh, you can create an electronic survey or poll. You can post it on your social media platform or email it out or uh, have it available on your website. 
collecting this data electronically make it easier and quicker to analyze your data afterward. Another way to collect data is uh, through market research. Market research could be as simple as counting the number of trees that line your block or playgrounds in your neighborhood. This approach can be done through observations and can help you compare differences, look for similarities, and spot trends from where you observe. Social media is another great source for collecting information. You can identify a popular hashtag or trending topic. Look for how many likes or number of downloads or views a post received. You can also download a transcript from a YouTube clip. And when you're reading over this text, uh, hone in on some key points. Here is an example of crowdsourcing for information. Uh, in the, during this campaign, people from around the world share photos of their clothing labels with the hashtag, who made my clothes. Organizers of this campaign wanted to raise awareness about the clothing industry, primarily labor rights, factory safety, environmental concerns, and generally it helped the public think more deeply about what they're consuming. This campaign demonstrated that collecting large amounts of data and information can make a powerful impact. Here uh, is an example of using data from existing sources. In 2013, Hostess, the company that makes Twinkies and other snack hates, went bankrupt. Uh, the factory owners blamed the unions and the, the new laborer unions blame poor management. Uh, this gray area left me with a lot of questions that could only be resolved with a musical. I named this musical Too Delicious to Fail. I looked into court transcripts of mediation sessions between the factory owners and the union workers. I researched international food policy, agricultural trade, and current events like farmer strikes around the world. I knew that I may not be able to make the best musical, but at least I want to make the most accurate musical. I wrote songs with titles like 10 Couplets on 18th Century British Corn Law to NAFTA, and a Twinkie has 39 ingredients, but ain't one of them is vitamin A. The lyrics consisted mostly of the 39 ingredients. You know, data can be fun. Information gathering can help you tell more accurate and compelling stories. Here are some things to keep in mind before you start. Who is your audience? Who are you gathering this information for? Who are you having this conversation with? What is your end goal or idea you want to present? Do you want to change people's minds? Do you want the research to spark new conversation? Do you need additional research? Where are the gaps in what you're currently finding? How will you share these results with the public? What tools do you currently have available? When we're considering tools, uh, I want to show you later on some free ones that are available online. Right now, I want to take you back to the 1900s. Uh, in W.E.B. Du Bois worked with his students to create an exhibit on the Black American experience with hand-drawn charts and graphs. These images are breathtaking. You can find these charts online and they're also available at the U.S. Library of Congress. In another example uh, is Mona Chalabi. She's a data journalist and creates hand sketch charts to depict data. Please check out both their works because I find them inspiring. They didn't use fancy or expensive software to tell their story. Their work reflect how deeply they care about the topic they're presenting. To add more tools to your toolbox, I, I want to share some free data visualization tools. Uh, the first one on the left-hand corner is Data Basic. 
It, data Basic provides easy to use web tools for beginners working with data. It is a great program for beginners to explore, play, make a mess, break something. Data Basic provides several tools on your site. One of them is called Word Counter. It's for analyzing your text and tells you the common phrases and words within this text. You can uh, use it on a report or a news article or a web page, for example. Right below that on the left hand corner is Little Sis. This site has a wealth of, of information. They also have a tool for creating something called a, a network diagram. Creating a network diagram will reveal connections between individuals and give you a bird's eye view of these connections. Muckrock is a database of Freedom of Information Act or public information requests. Though this is a method to obtain government records when it's not always readily available to the public. It's a library full of information like email, correspondence, or internal memos. Some are redacted, and many of these records are not as polished as what you might find on a government published report or on their website. Another source is open data. Uh, there's often city governments would publish public records related to their services, like parks or fruit pantries and health data. Uh, you might be able to find one in the city where you live. This information uh, could be available as a spreadsheet in CSV, JSON files, or geodata for mapping an API. There are many free mapping tools you can use. I found Mapbox and Tableau public to be user-friendly, intuitive, and could be used without formal training. You can also uh, use infographics in your design. Uh, you can find the source through Infogram or a Canva. And now to wrap everything up, here's a checklist for you to ensure that the data you're presenting is accurate and clear. Look into the title and other labels on the chart. This sets the stage for what the information is primarily about. Understand where this information came from by looking for the source or reference or citation. The author uh, should be added to add credibility because they this, this person wants to stand by their claim. When was this data gathered? The date and time frame indicate whether this information is current and still relevant. Is the graphic easy to read? Take into consideration color, font size, and type of chart. Now, this is the end of our presentation. I want to thank everyone for joining. Please feel free to share any questions or comments you have in the chat. You could also DM me at Twitter. And uh, my Twitter handle is fourth letter.